Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to prepare for NRHA pattern number one. Walked you through it slow on the other video on Jeffrey, um, nice and easy on what the requirements are for the pattern. Now we're at a paid warm up day before I have to do it or we're at home and I just wanna practice this pattern. I'm gonna school this horse. I'm gonna to try to go full speed on him and I'm just gonna see what he does and I will just kinda of talk you through how I would get him prepared to do pattern number one. So again, we said I'm at, a, I'm at a schooling somewhere, probably not an actual class for pattern one because I may go way uh, off the reservation if I need to. But um, this is at home, preparing for a show, um, or I'm at a show and I've got a paid warm up and, I'm, and I wanna work on something. Now, unless I have something really major going on, I'm gonna go one hand. Don't go in there two hands. Go one, that's what the test is gonna be, so you wanna practice that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and lope off and try to go full speed. Being that this is a pattern where I have to go up and down the middle past the end, I'm gonna really stress running long. Oh, he missed that stop a little bit. So I'm just gonna back him up and kind of remind him, whoa, that hey, no matter what, when I say whoa, you need to stop. Settle, roll back, act like it never happened. Okay, so right there, I asked him for the left lead. He didn't take it, so I'm gonna break him down, make him take it. Hey. There, better stop there. So out of that rollback, um, the pattern, according to the pattern, it doesn't say what lead you have to be on. So if I was truly showing, I would have let him get away with that there and gone on. But because I'm schooling, I asked him for a left lead. He said, no, I'm gonna make him take that lead because I feel like little things add up. Okay, so now I'm gonna get my right rollback. Oh, there, that was his best stop yet. I'm gonna back up. So I'm thinking in my mind, the schooling that I did, whoa, whoa, whoa. The schooling that I did there must have helped because I thought his middle stop was the best one and I thought he ran down nice. Said whoa to him a few times on the backup just to reinforce that whoa means not only stop but back up. Now with schooling, I'm probably not going to practice four spins because I don't want him anticipating the shutoff. Start him. Oh, there, did five spins. Missed the shutoff there, so I'm going to go back the other way. Oh, better. Do you remember when we walked through slow and I really wasn't focusing on it, he overturned there too. Not gonna make a big deal out of that. To me, that's just a little hang up and neck reining, so I'll just go back the other way and tighten it up. There, he just got a little sloppy, a little forward there. Whoa, still not a great shut off, so I'm gonna spend a minute here schooling, because if I overspin, I'm giving points away. So I'm gonna pay attention to this here. And now the more I school him, or the more I turn him, the sloppier he's getting with his footwork. Whoa. So you see I just kind of came in there with two hands and just reminded him to keep his legs underneath him. Okay, now we're started a whole nother deal. Now he's starting to really anticipate spinning. I'll take a second here, kind of shake around on him, desensitize him to movement a little bit. Try that spin again. Oh, there, there's the shut off I wanted. Ah, let's see, he kind of swung his hip around at the end. I'm gonna try that one more time. I liked that turn, didn't like the shut off. Let's just go two spins. Oh, there, that time I kind of caught him and moved his hip over. So I cut down the number of spins there because I've turned him so many times and I kind of want to do the rest of that pattern. If this was a huge problem that I just wasn't getting right, I wouldn't do the rest of the pattern. I'd just stay right here because there's no point in going on. If you can't get these maneuvers down, your score is going to be so low, why keep going? 
Okay, let's go ahead and go to the left now. Oh. Working that shut off again here. Oh. One more time back to the left. Oh. Good. Okay, so standing still real good here in the middle. We'll go ahead and run this fast circle. Now here I'm gonna pick on this departure a little bit, make sure that nose is where it's supposed to be. Release, make sure that he doesn't try to anticipate the departure, good. Speed him up. Everything feels really good right here. I'm gonna check in with him and ask him to bridle, which is something he should know how to do. Not bad, but leaning on me a little bit. Um, ask him to slow down. Didn't slow down at all. What I'm gonna do there is not get mad and jerk on him because I don't want him scared. I'm just gonna pick up, back him up to the middle, let him stand. Just reinforce that he was supposed to slow down and that he gets a chance to stand here in the middle and relax, which I think with repetition, he'll learn to wanna be here. So he'll start anticipating slowing down, which that's probably one of the few times that we actually want him to anticipate something. We'll try that circle again. Run that circle, ask him to bridle. A little better there. Not quite as good as he normally does, but pretty good. So I'm gonna make him get soft there. Hey, hey, wait on me. Um, okay, a little bit better, not great. Back him up, do it again. Back up to my fast circle, ask him to bridle. Um, there, really good. I reached down and pet him. That's what I was looking for. It took me three times. I think that was a good schooling that I gave him there and I'll remember that when I go to prepare for the actual pattern on show day, I'll work on transitions a lot. Speed him back up. Ask him to bridle, a lot better this time. change and stop him and back up. Reason why, before I got to that middle to ask him to change, I could feel him speeding up, which isn't surprising given the way he wasn't, wasn't really slowing down in the middle. He hit that change and I just picked up and pulled him to a stop. Didn't really punish him, but just I asked him to pick up. If he wanted to, he could have melted the ground nice and easy. He didn't, so I'll just back him up, no big deal. So right now, I asked him again, this is like the fifth time I asked him to bridle, and he's doing okay, but he keeps speeding up. I'm gonna make him break down and pay attention to my hands. Come right back through that middle for that change again. Still looking up, finding the middle, change, better. So now I'm gonna make him break down. Oh, now he's still pulling on me. Pull and get back, there. I like that lead change a lot better though. He wasn't near as forward. And I'm still on pattern one. I know we've added a bunch of stuff to it, but I'm still thinking about one. Running fast, pick up bridle, break him down a little bit, kind of reinforce making him wait on me and get soft in the face. Um, see, I waited three strides before I pulled him in the ground. Didn't speed up, but he sure didn't slow down good enough. Stand still again. One thing you should notice, I haven't jerked on him, I haven't done anything that should get him scared. That's not gonna help. Okay, we'll go run again. Do my other large fast. Bridle. I like that response better there. Looking up, finding my middle. Horse is steering pretty good. Change. Oh, much better. Let him walk for just a couple steps. Ask him to bridle, he's pulling through me again. 
make them get soft and I'm getting ready to make my approach on my last stop right here. Got a good marker here for where I'm supposed to be at big old horse. Sit back, go on. Whoa. Okay, good rundown. See how he just didn't get in the ground the way I wanted him to. No big deal, I'll back him up, back him up. I'll tell you why it's no big deal in a second. Lope off and stop again. Oh, there. And then I'd probably step off of him if I was doing a warm up and I'd walk out. And the reason why I say it's no big deal about that stop there, what's the one thing I learned from doing this work on Jeffrey here on this pattern? I think if I showed him today, he'd be okay, but he's a little forward. Everything that we did, like I asked him to bridle right in the beginning and he wasn't quite there and actually backing it up a step further. He missed a couple stops a little. Uh, everything that he did in the pattern, he was just a little bit ahead of me. So I'm not surprised on that last rundown that he stopped, but he didn't stop great. But that just goes to show you right there how you can school a pattern without getting your horse worried. I think that I learned a lot about him. He also learned how to get through a pattern without being babysat the whole time. And to me, the key now is, you know, knowing this early, don't decide like the day before you're gonna start preparing for stuff like this. NRHA is great about putting the patterns out. Do this practice early. If I go do this another four or five times before I hit the show pen, I bet my odds of doing well probably go through the roof.